I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykes, retired. The torpedo is the submarine's usual weapon. With the long, deadly fishing of tubes, a sub can aim at and strike a distant target. But our undersea fleet during World War II wasn't limited to fighting with torpedoes. In this chapter of the Silent Service, we follow the USS Trigger on a patrol that began with an unusual assignment and had an even more unusual climax. Pearl Harbor, busy nerve center of the Pacific Fleet. Here, Lieutenant Commander Roy S. Benson, captain of the Trigger, received orders for his submarine's third patrol. I'm afraid you're not going to like this one, Roy. I don't understand, sir. Well, this is sort of an unusual patrol. Maybe that isn't quite the right word. Let's call it a special patrol. Special? In what way? The Japanese shipping have been hugging the coast, heading for every cove to keep away from our submarines. Yes, sir. We've seen a lot of them do that. We've got to drive those ships back out into deep water where we can get at them. I'm all for that, but how do we do it? You'll be laying mines next trip, Roy. Mines? <laughs> Not what you wanted, I know. But, but we, we don't know anything about laying mines. Few sub crews do. You'll get some practice before you go out. But why the trigger, Captain? After that last patrol, not getting credit for the tanker, I'd, I'd hope for something better. <laughs> we have no choice, Roy. Your boat's ready for sea, the job has to be done, and to put it bluntly, we're finding ourselves running short of torpedoes. Oh, I guess I don't have any choice. <laughs> I'm afraid not. Now, let me show you what has to be done. Like all patrols, the trigger stirred really began in the imagination of her crew. Yes, sir. That's the way I figure it. The Japanese are building up them northern bases, and they ain't doing it with carrier pigeons. No fool. Yeah, there's ships up there. Plenty of them. Big, fat freighters, and that's where we're heading. Straight dope, huh? The straightest you'll ever hear. You might as well break out your foul weather gear. Yeah, I've had this with you before, Gebhardt. Remember that Kiska patrol? Huh? You had us going to Australia. All right, so somebody changed the orders. But this time I know. And you will better get some antifreeze for them rusty veins of yours. <sighs> You're going to need it. Oh, what's the good news, Mr. Beach? Skipper come aboard yet? Hey, Mr. Beach. Gebhardt here has got it figured out already. He knows where we're going, how many ships he'll sink, and the name, rank, and serial number of every Japanese skipper we'll meet. <laughs> Your guess is as good as anyone's, Gebhard. The skipper came aboard a few minutes ago. All he said was clear the torpedo tubes and get ready to take on mines. Mines? Mines? That's right, mines. Twenty-four of them. Gonna be a little tight for a while. Oh, but what about the torpedoes? This is a submarine, not a mine layer. Yeah. We'll take a few of those along, too. Just in case. That was Honolulu. Same as last time. Crowded. I wake you up? <laughs> no. My mother always left the light on in my room. I'm used to it. What's a good word? I've been ashore since noon. Don't brag. Come on, when are we shoving off? Pretty soon. Kind of an answer is that. Pretty soon when? As soon as we get the mines aboard. Oh. What mines? The next one's a mine laying patrol. A mine laying patrol? Yeah. Well, pipe down and turn in. You're kidding. Oh, why? What kind of a way to win a war is that? With mines? Well, we have to take the patrols as they give them to us. Besides, what's wrong with mines? If I'd wanted mine layer duty, I'd have put in for it. In the war, you don't always get your choice. Maybe not. As long as you gotta be in one, the least you can do is hope for a fighting ship.
Trigger loaded her new weapons and got underway from Pearl Harbor on December 3rd, 1942. Com Subpack wants us to mine the coastal waters north of Tokyo. We've got to drive enemy shipping out into the open. How close are you going in, Captain? Close enough to lay the mines in 55 feet of water. <laughs> we can hardly even get wet in 55 feet of water. That's right. Not enough water to wade in. Mines in the tubes instead of torpedoes and destroyers thick as flies. Anyone want to get off now? <laughs> <laughs> and those uh, mines, when they go out the bow tubes, they settle up forward and then we have to pass over them? Don't let that worry them. The mines can't be detonated until 45 minutes after they've cleared the tubes. What if somebody goofed? Well, you can file a complaint with the manufacturer. From Mars. <laughs> <laughs> I know all of you wanted another torpedo shooting patrol, but there just aren't enough torpedoes to go around. Before the war's over, we'll get plenty of chances to shoot. In the meantime, this is our job, and we're expected to do it well. Cruisers and wagons, flat tops and bigger, will blow out their brains on the minds of the trigger. <laughs> days passed, Trigger plowed on towards her assigned area, while below decks each man worked at new responsibilities. Now you have the bow planes when we go in, Carlisle. I maintain depth, that's the important thing. It'll be shallow. And if you don't hold her at the order depth, we'll either be hitting bottom on top of our own mines or popping out on the surface. Either can mean curtains. I'll be plotting the way in, so keep those phenomenal readings coming through. I want to know how much water's under the keel at all times. You better check this over. It'd be a bad time to blow a fuse. Yes, sir. All right, now, easy, man, easy. There's no telling what these things will do. No, they're safe now. There's nothing to worry about. Yes, sir, but no matter what you say, I'll be glad when these things are out of here. Torpedoes, I understand. Well, we've got somebody on board who can help you. He's had duty on a mine layer. Oh, Perkins? Perkins? Oh, we don't need no help. <laughs> Thanks, anyway. We don't need no help at all. See, it's a sort of a new type mine. Influence magnetic, it's called. See, it, it doesn't have to touch anything. Just the magnetic field around the ship sets it off and wow! 1,100 pounds of torp under your keel. Better put a third look out on watch, Penrod. Anything can happen from here on in. All right, sir. Ship contact bearing, three, four, four. Me with no torpedoes in the tubes. Trigger stalked the contact. At Pearl Harbor, they would want to know the type of ship, her course, and even her intention, if possible. She's a freighter. Special gear on her well deck. Might be heading for truck. Steady on course 240. Steady on course 240. Too bad we can't go after it, Captain. Orders read we're to make an undetected mine plant. We'll worry about freighters when that's over. Take the car on, Penrod. I want to look up that freighter while she's fresh in my mind. Aye, right, sir. Be fresh in my mind for a long time. But with this trigger, the safety's on. With our lookouts constantly searching the waves and sky, Trigger made contact with three other ships before reaching the assigned area. Each time she avoided combat and slipped by undetected. You know, times really haven't changed much. Huh? This book, it's about pirates. 
Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know, in a lot of ways, they were just like sub-skippers. How's that? Well, I had their choice of targets. They roamed around in their own area, and they picked off what they could. Just like us, huh? Oh, come on. Come off it, will you? Three contacts in two days, and we ducked out on all of them. We're not ducking, and you know it. Most the same thing. We just have a different kind of job to do this trip, that's all. Big deal. On December 21st, Trigger arrived at her assigned area. With the sea to conceal her, she moved in close to Inubosaki, north of Tokyo, and the captain planned the last step of his mission. This spot should do it. It's the third freighter that's passed through there, and they've been hugging the coast like their lives depend on it. Don't they? Down scope. We'll have to navigate in there from bearings on the beach. Daylight's out of the question, so we'll go in tonight. An awful big moon up there right now. We'll go in submerged. Submerged? There's hardly enough water in there to float a rowboat. That's our problem. After sunset, we'll surface, get a reasonable charge in the batteries, then go in to lay the northern field first. After that, we'll proceed south along the coast a few miles, then lay the second string heading out to sea. Any questions? Yeah. If we get spotted in there and they call the dogs, it'll be 10 miles before we hit deep water. Yeah, with no surface radar, they'll be on top of us before we know it. We'll have to rely on the sound gear. If we're attacked, we'll surface and make a run for it. Have ammunition for the deck gun stacked near the scuttle. Break out the small arms, too. Madam Butterfly, here I come. <laughs> By 9 o'clock that night, the trigger had the necessary charge in her batteries and slipped beneath the waves again to begin delivering her deadly cargo. How much water do we have? 30 feet of water under the keel is showing up fast. Ten degrees, Captain. Bring her right to two four zero. Coming right to two four zero. Almost time to lay the first group. Very well. Open the outer doors. Open the outer doors. Open the outer doors. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Outer doors open forward, sir. Aye, aye, tubes aft. Tubes aft, report outer doors open, sir. All right, let him go. Commence mine plan. Fire one, fire seven. Fire one, fire seven. Sounding. 23 feet. We should come left 10 degrees, Captain. Come left to 230. Coming left to 230. Fire two, fire eight. Fire two, fire eight. We close in, Captain. Only 23 feet of water under our keel. Uh-huh. Steady as you go. Steady as you go. Steering course two, three, three. Fire three, fire nine. Fire three, fire nine. 18 feet. Fourteen feet. Fourteen feet. 
I have to have more speed. Can't hold the depth. All ahead, standard. All ahead, standard. Fire four. Fire ten. Fire four. Fire ten. Raise the sound head. Raise the sound head. Raise the sound head, aye, aye. Raise the sound head. I hope the skipper's got eyes in the back of his head. Now we can't even hear. Fire five. Fire five. That was close. We'll have to fight her all the way now. Eleven feet. Very well. Left full rudder steady on one six zero. Left full rudder steady on one six zero. Secure the mine plant. We're through with the first string. Trigger work to way carefully down the Japanese coast. Then turn seaward to begin laying the second string of mine. Fire four, fire eight. Fire four, fire eight. We're getting company. What is it, Captain? Looks like a freighter. Probably has an escort somewhere. Load torpedoes and two tubes forward and two tubes aft. Continue laying mines from the other tubes. Fire three, fire nine. Fire three, fire nine. Load torpedoes and two tubes forward and two tubes aft. Continue laying mines from other tubes. Now ah, we're talking business. This is what submarines are made for. Come on. Down scope. Well, a little luck. We might slip out of here without being seen. I know I'd swap that luck for 200 feet of water. <laughs> Number one and two tubes ready forward. Seven and eight ready aft. Very well. Up scope. Coming, passing directly astern. Fire five, fire ten. Fire five, fire ten. There's a destroyer with him. How much water? Nineteen feet. Secure the mine plant. Let's get ready for him. Set torpedo depth at eight feet. Secure the mine plant. Set torpedo depth at eight feet. We won't have water enough to go deep for an hour. Stand by for battle stations. Gun action. Stand by for battle stations. Gun action. Stand by for battle stations. Gun action. One seven two. Range. Mark. One oh five oh. Set. Down scope. Perfect for a stern shot, but we can't risk it yet. What about the destroyer? He's trailing. If they spot us, we'll fire at him first, then shift targets. Stern tubes ready, sir. Depth set at eight feet. Very well. Stand by aft. This is a shooting observation. Stand by aft. Angle on the bow, port 15. Bearing, mark, 185. Range, mark, 1090. Set. Well, I'll be a... What is it? The freighter. She struck one of our mines. She what? Come on, take a look. The destroyer didn't see us. She's chasing around. Probably thinks it was a torpedo. Who's gonna believe it? Alice? Yes, sir? Ever see a ship going down? Uh, no, sir. I'll take a look at what your mines did. My mines? Sure, you fired them. Go on, take a look.
Thank you, sir. Down, sir. This is the captain. That explosion you just heard was an enemy freighter blowing up. She struck one of the mines relayed in the northern field and is going down rapidly. Hey! Hey! Oh, there'll be no living with Perkins now. <laughs> Trigger looted pursuit and slipped quietly into the deep water, leaving an 8,400-ton freighter on the bottom. With the mine laying accomplished, Trigger turned to the attack, the role she knew best. Three ships felt the sting of her torpedoes. All were sunk. And 29 days after she entered the patrol area, Trigger was on her way home. All right, so we sunk the ship with the mine. We sunk three more with torpedoes. What about that? Well, yeah, but where were you? What do you mean, where was I? I thought those fish all went out the stern tubes. The stern tubes? Why did... <laughs> oh. Nice day to be heading home, huh? Yeah, that beach at Waikiki is going to feel mighty good. Samson Company? Sure, Captain. We're just figuring out how to spend our back pay. Morning, Thomas. Morning, sir. A pretty good patrol, Captain. Four ships and they never laid a glove on us. Uh, that's not bad. I hope the next one's different. Someone else's turn for mine laying. I thought you wanted this patrol, Captain. Thomas, one of these days you'll command a ship of your own. When you do, you'll find you can't pick your own spots. But like them or not, when you get your orders, you do the best you can and hope for a better deal next time. Yes, sir, I guess I see what you mean. Thank you. Keep it. I think it's yours. was one of the little-known functions of submarines during World War II, and their efficiency in this phase of undersea warfare was of great value in defeating the enemy. Today, we are fortunate in having with us Rear Admiral Roy S. Benson, captain of the Trigger on the patrol you've just seen. Nice to have you with us, Roy. Thanks. It's good to be here, Tommy. Roy, that must have been a pretty tight squeeze in the Trigger. Eleven feet of water isn't much to have under your keel, especially under those circumstances. Yes, it restricts the movements of the submarine to the point where it's almost a sitting duck for anti-submarine vessels. But we had a well-trained crew and we accepted it as a part of the hazards of the game. I'd say that well-trained crew had a pretty resolute skipper, too. What was the official box score for the Trigger's third patrol? Two freighters and one destroyer sunk by torpedoes, one freighter sunk by mines. It added up to 23,671 tons. A good score, one that earned you the Navy's highest decoration. Yes, it did. Following that patrol, Admiral Nimitz presented me with the Navy Cross at Pearl Harbor. But it is something I feel was earned by all of the officers and men who served with me on the trigger, and I wear it with them in mind. You got something else out of that patrol, didn't you, Roy? How do you mean? Well, I imagine you're the only submariner that ever got to see his own mines do their work. I suppose so. And believe me, it was a great sight. One you richly deserved after the tough job you had getting in there. Thanks for being with us, Roy. Thanks for inviting me. Be with us again when we bring you another true adventure of the silent service. Mm -hmm.